Welcome back, you guys. Boy CK. Now, I was asked to make an entire team of players who are going to be in a make it or break it season. I wanted to remix it a little bit, get every single team involved. So we're going to do one player from every team on a make it or break it season. Now remember, it's 1000% my opinion, okay? And I have to pick somebody on every team. So even if you disagree, let me know in the comments. You know what I'm saying? Everyone has their own opinion. Um, and if there's someone obvious I missed, also let me know. Now let's get right into it. If you guys are new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Going to be uploading a lot on this upcoming Madden season. Um, Let's start with the Bears, okay? I wrote down a wide receiver by the name of Chase Claypool, okay? He had a really solid rookie season. I'm pretty sure he had like four touchdowns in a game against my Philadelphia Eagles. I remember it vividly. Last year, he got traded to the Bears. Didn't really pan out for them the way they thought it would. Now you have DJ Moore in Chicago. You have Darnell Mooney. They should be taking a lot of the attention away so fields maybe can find claypool in some spots you know and hopefully he does what they're hoping he can do you know hopefully he makes the most of his opportunities he's a free agent after the season that's why i wrote him down i think it's a make it a break a year for him on to the cincinnati Bengals. we are looking at the tight end position Okay, I wrote Irv Smith Jr. down. They've been looking for a solid, consistent tight end in Cincy for a while. They had Hurst a couple years ago, I think. They had Uzoma last year. Now he's in New York. Now it's Irv Smith's turn. He has a one-year prove a deal. Um, obviously, they're really stacked wide receiver. They're looking for that next tight end to, to help them out a little bit. The first defensive player of the video is going to be on the Buffalo Bills. We have Leonard Floyd. He signed a one-year deal. Uh, he has all the potential in the world. I feel like he's one of those guys that... You know, you hear people uh, give their analysis of his game and they're always like, oh, yeah, so much potential. But he has to put it together. Free agent after the season. If he does put it together, they probably bring him back. If not, he's probably a goner and he's already and then he'll probably be a journeyman, you know, because he was on the Rams. I forget where he was before that. First quarterback of the video is in Denver. I know he has a ton of guaranteed money. Still has a couple years left after this upcoming season, but hey, I wouldn't put it past him to like bench him or start looking elsewhere and maybe start rebuilding if he has a terrible season like he did last year. Now you have Sean Payton. There's really no excuse. That's an offensive mastermind right there. Gotta step up, bounce back to the dangerous world so we know, and I think he's gonna do it. So yeah, make it or break a season, even though he's guaranteed a lot of money. One could say maybe to Sean for the Browns, but he has a couple more years or maybe one or two years more than Russell Wilson. A little bit more guaranteed money. I think they're locked in no matter what happens. So I looked a little elsewhere, okay? On their defense, a guy from DBU, Grant Delpit, who is a free agent after this season. And obviously, he's from DBU. So they're hoping that he can step up and be the next great safety, you know? But if not, I think they do move on. So I think it's a make it or break a season for him. Now, keep in mind, I got this contract information from SpotRack. It's a really useful platform. So if you ever need to check up any contracts, that's where I would suggest. Anywho, Baker Mayfield, that's the guy I'm going with for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A one-year prove it deal once again, had a pretty solid stint in Los Angeles, had a nice game-winning drive. Everyone was happy for him. Now he needs to prove that it was not a fluke, okay? You still have Evans, you have Godwin. I know you don't have Gronk, you don't have AB, don't have playoff Lenny. So that Super Bowl roster is a little bit different now, but you still have worse. Still have some solid talent on offense. He needs to have a good season. He just has to. Otherwise, he's a journeyman. As for the Cardinals, I went with a defensive player, Isaiah Simmons. All right, the Cardinals already declined the option for 2024 for Simmons. So, I mean, that right there, when teams decline options, I, I think that says a lot. Maybe it doesn't in the grand scheme of things, but I think it says, okay, it's not that we're giving up on you, but we want you to earn a new deal. We want you to prove yourself why you deserve a new deal or an extension or something similar to that. As for the Chargers, I went with JC Jackson. He had a down season last year. Uh, he needs to bounce back. I think he has a year left after this upcoming season, but maybe they look to trade him. Maybe, I, I don't know. Who knows what happens? If he has two back-to-back -back bad years, Maybe they move Asante to CB1. Maybe Asante's already CB1. I'm sorry. I don't know 100% everything that goes on in all these other organizations. But either way, I, I think they're hoping he bounces back and has a really good season. On to the Kansas City Chiefs. I went with Clyde edwards Hilaire, one of my favorite names in the NFL. But he's in a crowded running back room. With Pacheco, McKinnon, they brought back. He needs to make the most of his touches because Kansas City already declined the 2024 option. Another guy who got his 2024 option declined. So yeah, I think that right there says a lot. Needs to just really, really prove that he belongs in Kansas City. Otherwise, he's going to be looking for a new team. For the Indianapolis Colts, I went with the free safety Julian Blackman. He's a free agent after the season. 
Okay, so right there, that's really the the main thing I was looking at. Uh, is a team would uh, it was tough. There, some of these teams were tough. There wasn't like an obvious answer for a lot of them. So I just went with some guys that were pretty obvious, like literally going to be a free agent next year. So he has to prove that he belongs in Indianapolis, or they're going to probably look elsewhere. Now for the Commanders, I went with Chase Young mainly because Washington declined his 2024 option, even though he was a very high draft pick. He needs to stay healthy. Okay, he need we know the skill, we know the talent is there, but can he stay healthy? That's the question. If he does, they probably bring him back. If not, probably on a new team. He could probably copy and paste everything I just said, maybe a little bit less, you know, from Michael Gallup on the Cowboys. That's who I went with. He also needs to stay healthy. Uh, Dallas has a potential out after this season. So if he does not stay healthy, if he does not perform as the number three in Dallas, they might look elsewhere as well. On the Miami Dolphins, I went with Raheem Mostert. And this is mainly because they drafted a new speedy running back. Devin Akane. Hopefully I said that right. I probably didn't. I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, Miami also has a potential out on Mostert's contract after this season. That's another reason why. I, I think they've been looking for a running back in Miami for the longest time. Miles Gaskin, they, they tried to make him a feature back. If not, I think they can move on from Mostert. They have Jeff Wilson too. So he needs to definitely step up, produce all season long. One of the easier ones of the video, Quez Watkins in Philly. I mean, if you're an Eagles fan, you notice. Know he has all the speed. He has all the makings of a good deep threat. But for some reason, he just has some butterfingers for whatever reason it is. And he's a free agent after this year. Okay, so the Eagles, they bought him. They bought in Olamide, Zacchaeus from the Falcons. They have AJ, Devontae. This is Quez's last chance. Otherwise, they're going to move on. Okay, they're going to look elsewhere. And I'm, I'm rooting for him. Hopefully, he turns into that deep threat that we can trust. On the Atlanta Falcons, I went with the guy they just recently acquired, Jeff Okuda. He played 10 games in his first two seasons in Detroit. Last year, he played a bunch. I think he only missed one or two games, but he needs to stay healthy. He needs to prove that last year was not a fluke. He needs to prove that that is the norm going forward. Atlanta already declined his 2024 options, so they're already a little weary. Even though they traded for him, they're like, okay, let's see what you got. Let's make sure that last year was not a fluke. Might be a little bit of a cop-out answer right here, but for the Niners, they're roster is really good i had to go with the most obvious position that's quarterback whoever starts at quarterback whether it's purdy coming in after a few games uh being injured lance whether he gets to start darnold whoever it is at quarterback because they have a great roster they're ready to contend every year purdy needs to prove that last year was not a fluke lance needs to prove that he can be that starter and darnold you know he's shown flashes so whoever it is on the g-men i went with amani or warrior Hopefully I said that one right. <laughs> one year prove it deal. Another former Lions cornerback, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, it, it's really that simple. That's why I went with him. Another tough roster. Uh, Daniel Jones just got a contract. I would have went with him last year, but yeah, he proved it. And so he he, uh, he earned his deal. Now it's Amani's turn. For the Jaguars, I went with Calvin Ridley, a guy who is a free agent after the season. He needs to show he's the same wide receiver from two years ago okay obviously he got suspended the entire year last year um they have a pretty crowded wide receiver room they lost marvin jones all right they still have zay jones they still have christian kirk but yeah I, I don't know if they bring him back if he does not really really show that he's the same guy so i think it's a make it or break a season for him looking at another wide receiver for the jets Corey davis all right, he's in a very very crowded wide receiver room as well even more crowded than the jaguars um, he's a free agent after the season. So that right there shows you all you need to know. Very high draft pick previously has shown a lot of flashes. Needs to put it all together this year. It's now or never because they have Gary Wilson as the wide receiver one. Nicole, they just got Lazard. He needs to make the most of his touches. Now it's going to be his first year starting. I'm pretty sure I looked at ESPN's depth chart. Um, but Brock Wright on the Lions, that's who I went with. He's a free agent after the season once again. They also drafted Laporta in round two. So they're already looking at his replacement, you know, even though it's his first year starting or whatever. I, I think he needs to make the most of his opportunities. Otherwise, they will not hesitate to move in the second rounder. For the Packers, I went with Darnell Savage. Now, they restructured his deal. It's a little confusing on spot rack. He is a free agent after the season. I'm pretty sure like his rookie contract is about to be over. I, I don't know. But if it's not, I'm sorry. If it is... That's my pick. I'm sticking with it. Uh, he's shown flashes once again. They need him to take that next step to that next level. On the Panthers, another guy who is also a free agent after the season, Yatera Gross Matos. They've been hoping for big things from him 
on the other side of Brian Burns, they need another guy to take some attention away. And if he can't do it this year, they might go ahead and move on. Now on the Patriots, their roster is really, really solid. Another team that is uh, really, really good at a lot of positions. But I, even though he has a year left after this upcoming season, I went with Mac Jones. I don't know. I, I feel like the front office will start looking elsewhere or maybe even start transitioning. Bailey Zappi, who came in and performed pretty well last year in his uh, short stints. And then he, he looked a little shaky too, but I don't know. I feel like Mac needs to definitely solidify his spot as the quarterback of the future for New England, maybe earn an extension, something like that. On the Raiders, I went with a guy who was a former first round pick, Jerry Tillery. Okay, Las Vegas has potential out after the season. So that right there has to, you know, give you cause for concern if you're Tillery. You need to prove that you belong in Las Vegas. You have Crosby, you have Chandler, you have a lot of guys to learn from. No reason, no excuse not to take that next step. So yeah, he needs to prove he belongs. On the Rams, I went with Van Jefferson, a guy who I've had in fantasy for a couple seasons in a row now, and I've seen a firsthand. He will have good games, good performances, good stretches of play, and then completely disappear. So he needs to prove he can be consistent. He needs to stay healthy. And also, he's a free agent after season. So obviously, Cooper Cup solidified that wide receiver one spot. They had Odell for you know a year, but Van Jefferson's now the wide receiver two on the depth chart. So he needs to step up into that role and really prove that he can be that wide receiver too. If not, they're going to move on. Now, as for the Ravens on ESPN, it says that they're going to be running a 3-4. I'm not sure how much of a fact that is. Um, but if they are, that means Patrick Queen is going to be starting. And Baltimore already declined his 2024 option. So that right there, another thing you can point to as in yeah, this front office is a little bit weary about bringing him back. He needs to have a good season. He has a nice mentor in uh, Roquan Smith, so there's no excuse, okay? Baltimore, they don't play with their MLBs after Ray Lewis. They just don't. So you need to, you need to perform or else they will move on quickly. Saints was a very tough one. Really good roster, quarterback. They just got Derek Carr, signed him to a, a nice contract. They have Kamara, they have Jamal. I didn't know where else to look. I, I went with Cesar Ruiz, maybe Michael. I mean, Michael Thomas set records. You're not getting rid of him, even if it's his last year, which I don't know if it is in his contract. I, I just don't think they're going to get rid of him. That's just my opinion. So I went with a right guard. The first lineman of the video, I'm pretty sure. He's a free agent after the season. The Saints already declined the 2024 option. You need to sure up that position. So I, I went with Ruiz. Yes, I know the Seahawks traded a lot to get Jamal Adams, but he needs to stay healthy, okay? He is a free agent after the season because Seattle has a potential out after the season. So right there, I mean, that tells y'all you need to know they're paying him a lot of money. So if he does not live up to that contract, I don't think they'll hesitate. On the Steelers, I went with a cornerback, not Patrick Peterson. He's their CB1, but Levi Wallace, all right? Pittsburgh has had some trouble at the cornerback spot the last couple years, if I'm not mistaken. I know last year was pretty bad. And yeah, Levi is a free agent after the year. So it was the obvious choice, you know, they definitely want to have two really good corners, Patrick Peterson, he's getting up there in age, but yeah, they're going to start looking to maybe start drafting more corners, maybe trade for some, if Levi does not perform. Now, Robert Woods is who I went with for the Houston Texans. Houston has potential out after the season, right there tells you all you need to know. Last year, he was disappointing in Tennessee. He played really well in the Rams a few years ago. He was very consistent, um, but last year, I, I don't know if it's the scheme. I don't know if it's, you know... Everything around Derrick Henry at running back, you know, he can attribute his struggles to that, maybe. But if he has another down year, Houston could move on quickly. As for the Titans, <laughs> maybe another cop out. But I went with the quarterback position in total. If it's Tannehill, if it's Malik, anyone except Will Levis. Because obviously, he was a rookie. Malik, well, they just drafted another quarterback. So it's kind of not looking too good. He didn't do that well when he was starting last year. So I'm going with whoever starts a quarterback. That, that's just my opinion. And then finally... The Minnesota Vikings, I went with K.J. Osborne. Could have maybe went with Madison. I think Madison has a year left after this upcoming season, his first full year as a starter. But yeah, I, I went with Osborne. He's been the wide receiver three for a couple seasons behind Thielen and Jay Jettas. Now he's moving into the wide receiver two role. He needs to step in there and perform with flying colors, all right? Because he is a free agent after the season. Needs to earn that new deal, earn that extension, whatever it may be. So there you have it. That's my opinion on one player from every team that's in a make it or break it season in this upcoming season man let me know your thoughts in the comment section like the video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're new let me know any ideas you have for future videos second channel i'm trying to go crazy this year i'm trying to upload it a lot so any ideas mo most ideas i'm going to try to make it happen and uh, yeah i'll see you then